Ghost Hunting in New England, your favorite spooky podcast. Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Ghost Hunting in New England with your host, Amelia. And Beth. And today we're so excited. We have a great guest on. So it's Timothy Regan, and he's a gardenarian, high priest, a psychic medium, and a Salem witch. And we are so thrilled to have him on. So he does psychic medium readings over at Hex in Salem, and then he leads seances at Omen in Salem, which are two very, very cool places. Um, so if you have a chance to swing up that way, whether it's around Halloween time or just any time of the year, Salem's so much fun. It's one of my favorite spots in the entire New England area. Be sure to check those places out. Tim, thanks so much for being on with us. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you both for having me. I'm very excited to be here. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on your podcast. Thank it, you. It's a pleasure to be sitting with you. <laughs> so, okay. So tell us a little bit, if you wouldn't mind about how did you get into Wiccan? So I actually have a really funny story about this. I was 13 years old and I declared myself a witch. Coming from a very Catholic family, my grandmother was actually a catechism or CCD teacher. I uh, had read a few books and was really excited about this idea of this earth-based religion and being able to commune with spirits and connect to nature. And I decided to take my mother's Ethan Allen table out into the middle of the woods and use nail polish and paint sigils and magical symbols all over it. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And that went me, over very well. Hey, oh, yep. let me tell you, she was quite pleased with it. And uh, a neighbor happened to have noticed that I was dancing around performing rituals in, in the middle of the woods. She told my mother and then my mother ran out to the woods, grabbed me by the ear, dragged me to the local priest in North Andover, Father Keys, who has now passed away. And she said, my son is doing some devil worshiping something. And Father Keys, who at the time must have been in his late 80s, sat down with me and said, well, explain to me, what is witchcraft or Wicca? And I told him it's an, you know, a nature-based religion uh, that worships a goddess because in my belief system, you have to have a female to birth the creation of humans. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we have a god and a goddess. After sitting with him for 45 minutes or so, he called my mother into the room and said, Pauline, I don't understand. Witchcraft sounds like a beautiful religion. So this is a Catholic priest wow. affirming my religion to my mother. And, and that really was the start of it. And then I had trained with Lori Cabot, who uh, Governor Dukakis declared the official witch of Salem. Um, and that's kind of the beginning of my story. So I've been practicing Wicca and witchcraft for half my life now. That's so, amazing. Great. Yeah. And a quick clarification for me and some of our listeners. So as I understand it, you can be Wiccan and not be a witch. But if you are a witch, you are a Wiccan. Is that right? Am I understanding that correctly? Some people, this is a very loaded subject and a very, okay. you know, a lot of different opinions. For me, as a Gardnerian high priest... They are synonymous with each other. Witchcraft and Wicca. Wicca okay. is a Anglo-Saxon word that literally translates to witch. And they're the same thing. In the modern day interpretation, probably from the late 70s, it became this idea that witchcraft was a practice of magic and mm -hmm. Wicca was a religion. But really, the etymology of the words both go back to the same thing. And they're both religious practices, in my opinion. There are a lot of people that would say it's different. It differs based on witchcraft as a practice. It's the magical practice, and witch, Wicca being the religion. But in my opinion, it's it's the same thing. That's that's very interesting. And you just brought someone up who is very cool, and that is Lori Cabot, yeah. and she's yeah. awesome. And I know she has a lot to do with my next question, mm -hmm. and that is, can you talk a little about? Salem, Massachusetts, and what it is now, and how that happened, how it came up to be where it is today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Salem, Massachusetts was not known as the witch city for many, many years until Lori Cabot, who's a personal friend of mine, and we actually, we go out dining quite a bit. We enjoy uh, eating cake over at Coffee Time, and I, I don't know if I can mention businesses, yeah, but co on. Coffee Time in yeah. Salem. Um, and she brought the idea of witchcraft as being a religion to the city of Salem. Prior to that, it was known for its maritime history, and they kind of washed over the whole idea of the witch trials of 1692. And Laurie, who created the Witches League for Public Awareness, um, 
try to reclaim the word witch and try to fix the misconceptions that most people, even the locals of Salem, still had that witchcraft was a devil-worshipping religion. She went on shows like the Jenny, you know, Jenny show, the Oprah, uh, Phil Donahue, all of these shows, wow. and really was was very world renowned for fixing the misconceptions of witchcraft. She even protested against the witches of Eastwick, and they had to put an additional, I don't want to say credit, but additional uh, warning in the end of the movie saying this does not truly depict witches' practices, because where do you really see any other religion made into a, a movie like that? They don't have That's a true. show where it's like, mm -hmm. look at what these Catholics did, and you know, look at what these Protestants did, but they can use our religion. And it, you know, entertainment is one thing, and I'm not really on a soapbox to prevent that, but she was at the time. She was trying to change the world view of what witchcraft was. Mm -hmm. So she brought the first witchcraft shop to this country, Salem, Massachusetts, which was Crow Haven Corner. And just a little plug for them. They were also the first people to put Manipura on their shelves. So if you are in Salem, Please go check them out and buy one of my bath bombs. Sorry, continue. Very nice. I actually work for her as well. I'm I'm there uh, every Monday. I was there earlier today. Oh, my gosh. Um, I love Laurel. Oh, I, I work there every Monday. I help her with Salem Saves Animals, which is an organization that is very near and dear to my heart as well. Um, but Lori opened this shop, and it was it's phenomenal. I mean, it's still, still going. It's the longest-running and oldest witch shop in the country. And... That really changed the entire demographic of Salem. Salem switched from being this maritime history place to being a mecca for witches and people that were interested in the occult, which basically just translates to secret, you know, secret organization, secret society, um, secret knowledge. Um, and she brought all of these people in and it started to blossom into a city that was interested in witchcraft, interested in ceremonial magic, which is a whole nother ball of wax, interested in spiritualism, uh, like the Fox Sisters. And we have two spiritualist churches in Salem itself. And it's really just been growing and blossoming ever since. We have many psychics, we have many shops. And in my opinion, it's kind of like a mini Lilydale in Salem now. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's awesome and great. You also and I don't know if you can touch on this at all. And if this is an offensive question, please let me know. Oh, yeah, of course. So in Salem, in, over the last few years, the Satanic Church has their headquarters there, yes. And I know a lot of people, especially in New England still to this day, think of Wiccan and Satanism as one and the same. Now, I know that is not correct, but could you kind of speak on those subjects a little just to help our listeners out? Absolutely, absolutely. So... I've already explained really what witchcraft and Wicca is. Satanism, which is not the same thing, and, and to be honest with you, it's not even really what they're practicing isn't really a religion per se. It's psycho-selfism. Um, I've met them several times. I have friends that work at their business. It is not, they're not worshiping the devil. Mm -hmm. They are not worshiping Satan. Um, if anything, they're probably... I mean, if we really look at what Satan translated loosely into shatan, or from Shatan, right, which means the, not oppressor, but the um, instigator, the argumentative, right? They're there to recognize that there are specific things in this world that are not acceptable. And our country is very much so a Judeo-Christian, Abrahamic religion center, right? Yep. They're here trying to break down those barriers and say, well, if you can have the Ten Commandments on the front lawn in Ar uh, Arkansas or wherever it is, mm -hmm. we want to be able to represent our religion because it's in the Constitution that all religions should be able to be represented and there, there's a separation of church and state. So that's really what they're opposing. You know, there's yeah. not they're not out there doing black. Well, I shouldn't say that. Lucian Graves, who runs it, actually did do a black mass in Harvard oh, uh, wow. a couple of years ago. But it's not about conjuring the devil. Mm. It's about recognizing yourself as God. That's what their viewpoint is. They're, they believe that you should be able to do whatever you want as long as it harms none because it's your right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, they're, not, they're, not, they're not bad people. Their opinions are, are their opinions, and everybody is you know, welcome yeah. to have their own opinion. I don't, they're not out there doing evil. They're not murderers. They're not sacrificing children and you know, bathing in blood. It's nothing like that. Um, do I think... It's a good thing to have it in Salem. My personal opinion, we've worked as witches so long to kind of destroy that myth of anything to do with the devil. To have these people come in, 
I think that I don't I'm not offended by it, but I think that it may be doing a disservice specifically to the witch community. Um, I have no issues with them. I have no problems with them. I hope they do well. But I think that this time is not the right time to kind of blend those things together because people still have misconceptions about witchcraft. So, yeah, that's really my whole opinion on them. Yeah. And people do definitely have misconceptions, which is why I kind of wanted to bring that up, because even sometimes like when I tell people what Beth and I do, like, oh, we're ghost hunters, they're like, Oh, are you playing with the devil? Are you doing all those things? I'm like, no, 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 no. Even our business cards say we don't do demons. Like, right. <laughs> so people really ask you that all the time. Really? Yes, all the time. I get okay. asked about demons daily at work. <laughs> daily. <laughs> you do. Absolutely. <laughs> so as we kind of segue over into the ghost hunting, could you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be a medium? Absolutely. Mediumship to me is kind of uh, like what the spiritualist church views, right? It's it's trying to prove that there is an existence of life after death. I am not here to dazzle you and, and give you all this information. I'm here to help you deal with your grieving process and know that you can connect to the spirits yourself. So when people come to sit down with me, I, I will tell them exactly what I hear or exactly what I sense. I'm, I'm very much so clear audience. I don't see very often. Um, occasionally, I'll get an image in my mind of something that is probably more psychic than, than spirit communication, but I still give it to the person as well. I hear spirit. So if I get a message and, and it's about your great aunt Bess and you need to know about it, it's it's giving you closure and also acceptance of her passing, but also the realization that you are you can talk to her. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. And I, I will tell you, I've had so many confirmations in my own life from spirit communication that has really changed my life. And I, I've been contacted by people all over the world to go in and cleanse their houses from spirits that have existed there prior or to help them with spirits of the land and spirits of place. And it's really more than anything, it's my spiritual work in some sense, mm -hmm. um, being able to help people deal with their passings help the spirits deal with passings um, and also commune with their family that has been, you know, a, a subject that hasn't been really talked about since, you know, the early Victorian period when the Fox sisters really brought the spiritualist church around. And I just find it absolutely beautiful. I think that mediumship is a gift. And I do believe that everybody has the ability mm. to do it. It's the analogy I always use is some children are born with the innate ability to play the piano yes. at a young age, right? And some children are not. But they really want to be musicians. So they practice and they study really hard and they get to the same level that that person that had the leg up originally had. And they, they can do just as well. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with mediumship and psychic ability. Mm -hmm. We're all born with the ability to do it. Doesn't necessarily mean that we've mastered it yet, but it's something that anybody can develop, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. And you just said something that we got as a question on our last podcast which was about helping the spirit kind of deal with it. Yes. So a question we had from one of our listeners last week that Beth and I kind of tried to answer, but I think you could probably do a much better job, is when we discuss ghosts or spirits that are kind of stuck here on Earth, how do you define that? How do you think that happens? Because what we, her and I agreed on is that it's rare. Mm -hmm. It doesn't usually, like, everyone is a spirit, but not everyone is confined to a home or a place they are haunting. Absolutely. So Absolutely. C can you give us any explanation about that or your opinion? M I can give you my opinion, which may lean a little bit more towards a religious view for me. Okay. Um, I believe in a three, a three world body or a three soul body. So there is a mental body, mm -hmm. um, which when you pass is really the cognitive thoughts that remain in a place or in a location. So there can be psychic memory in a place, right? That would be that part that would remain in that spot. Um, this is usually repetitive things that happen in a home or repetitive things that happen around you. People talk very regularly about, oh, I found, uh, I found a dime or I've seen a bird or I've seen, um, a, you know, my clock chimes at this time that it never t chimed at before or one of those types of situations. That's a very psychic memory. That's the memory of the spirit still existing within the home. Then there is the physical body, which decays and moves on and, and that sort of thing. And then there's the spirit. And in my opinion, that spirit is what transcends all of that and moves on. Hmm. Those spirits, I do believe, sometimes can maintain a location and be stuck in a location. And not to sound very 80s, but I think some of it really is. And when I say 80s, it's mostly because TV shows were on at that time where they were saying the spirit hasn't moved on. I do believe that. It has, a pro yeah. it has something that it needs to do. The spirit is not content 
with leaving this world. It may be due to an accident, a tragedy, something along those lines、mm. that is tying them to this place. Usually, what we're doing as mediums is connecting.